What's going on people? So listen, I wanna give you some stats on small businesses in Canada, the number of small businesses in Canada, because listen, one in 10 Canadians work for a small business, right? Small business firm. Now, small business, the small business ecosystem is in trouble, right? The real economy is in trouble. So if you work for a small business owner, if you are a small business, or if you're trying to start a business, or if you've been in business, the real economy is in trouble because the real economy is made up of small business firm, right? So small business firm, right? So let me give you an example here. This stats here, this data came from the Bank of Canada, right? Now, there are three different types of firms, right, in, in Canada that are considered small. So you have micro firms, right? Micro firms are anywhere between one to four employees. Now, they make up uh, the, 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 they make up about 40, 54.9% of all the firms in Canada, right? And then you have, the second one is micro small firms, which is they employ anywhere from five to 19 employees, right? And they make up, you know, they, they, they make up about 31.4% of all firms in Canada, right? And they employ, uh, they employ about 31.4% uh, yeah, they 31.4, that's the share of total employment. And then you have small firms, which is anywhere from 20 to 99 employees, and they make up 11.6% uh, of all firms in Canada, and they employ about 34. Now, if you see here, the share of all firms in Canada right but you know across all these firms so micro micro small and small it's about 97.9 percent it's 97.9 percent right so that means listen one in ten canadians work for a small firm right and small firm they hire i mean they employ about 65.4 percent of the labor force in canada so that means listen if you live in Canada, you should be concerned. You should be paying attention to what's going on in your real economy because it's going to impact you. It's going to impact me. It's going to impact anybody that that's in the labor force. Now, let me show you something. How big is the labor force in Canada, right? Uh, this here is from Stats Canada. So, according to references, uh, according to reference scenario, the number of Canadians who will be in the Canadian labor force, including persons who are employed or unemployed, is expected to continue to increase from 19.9, uh, 19.7 million to uh, in 20 in two, in 2017 to 22.9 million in 2036. Now, as of now, this uh, this press release came out uh they came out on march 20th 2019 so which means right as of 2022 the labor force let's say it's about 20 million right because this article mentioned that it was at 19.7 uh, because it came out 2019, but as of 2022, we can say that you know it's at 20 million, right? So that's the labor force. That are those are that's the uh, number of Canadians that are able, that are functional, that that can work, right? Now, if we go back to this graph here, right? Like I said, this impacts everybody, right? If you're a small business owner, if you are trying to get into business, right? What's going on in the economy is going to impact you because, as you see here. Share of total employment by all micro, micro, small, and small firms in Canada is 65.4%. So that means 65, so that means small businesses employ almost 65.4% of the total labor force. And the labor force, as you saw, is at 20 million. So which means safe to say that small businesses employ about 13 million of the entire labor force which is at 20 million so which means the real economy right now is is in a danger zone now the reason why i say it's in the danger danger zone is because watch this you see this article came out on january 1st 2021 right the C from cbc cbc that's the cbc news was saying that listen more than 200,000 canadian small businesses could close permanently during the covid 19 crisis throwing millions of people out of work as the resurgence of the virus worsens across much of the countries according to the new research right so more than 200,000 businesses could close their door permanently now let's look at how many businesses right there are, as of December 2019, there were 1.23 million employer businesses in Canada. Now, check this. Out of those 1.2 million, which is the 97.9%, were small businesses. So it's fair to say that, listen, small businesses play a major role 
they play a, an important factor in the Canadian economy. So right now with everything that's going on, with the Bank of Canada raising their interest rate, with the uh, inflation going up, uh, with the price of goods and services, everything just going up, interest rate hiking, small businesses will be impacted, will be affected, which means your job is gonna be impacted because if 65% of employment, if 65% of the share of employment comes from small business owners, which is one out of 10 Canadian is, uh, works for a small business firm, that means whatever happens in the real economy, the real economy is made up of small businesses, right? As you saw here, right? This is the real economy right here, not the speculative economy, which is the stock market, which is the, um, you know, the financial. No, this is the real economy, small businesses of all sizes. And a lot of these small businesses, right? Any business that has less than 100 employees considered a small business, right? And they, the share of all firms in Canada, they make up, right, 97.9%, let's say almost 98% of all the employers, of all the businesses in Canada are small businesses, right? As you saw here from this other list here, right? The number of businesses in Canada as of December 2019 was 1.23 million. And out of those, right, 1.2 million, which is 97.9 or 98% were small businesses. So listen, you have to pay attention to what's going on in the real economy, in the, in the economic cycle, because small businesses are being, they, they, they are feeling, they are feeling the pressure, right? interest rates going up, um, inflation, they have to either hike up their price, right? Because right now with interest rates going up, it's difficult for small businesses to get access to capital because it's gonna cost them more. Because check this, you see, I did a video talking about some of the reasons why a lot of businesses go out of business, right? Or, you know, the top reasons why many businesses go out of business, right? Now, the number one reason was actually because there's no market need for their product, which means, right, there was just no, nobody was, like there's no, their product wasn't serving any existing need in the market. But the second reason, right, the second reason was because they're running out of cash. They did not have enough cash flow, right? They were just running out of cash. And right now, a lot of small businesses are in that position where they are running out of cash because they don't have access to capital. They don't have access to uh, you know, credit lines. And the reason why they don't have access to credit line is because of this. Let me show you this article here. Um, because, let me go back to that article, right? Because 100, because listen, the average, the average debt that is being carried by a small business owner is at 160,000, right? So that means, uh, businesses are carrying a lot of debt right now, right? Like they, they have capital, but the capital is already used up, right? They, the capital is already used up. So that means they're carrying a lot of debt, right? So which means they are going to run out of cash sooner or later. If a business runs out of cash, they can't pay you, right? If, a, if your employer runs out of cash, they cannot pay you. And the reason why they, they're about to run out of cash is because they're already carrying so much debt. And the debt comes from, you know, the, all the borrowing, right? What happened during the lockdown, during the restriction, when, you know, when businesses were closed, you know, from 2020, businesses were closed, customers were not able to access products and services from these businesses, right? Because of all the government regulation, because of the pandemic, a lot of these businesses had to take on a borrowing. They had to borrow money just to stay afloat, to take care of rent, to take care of their employees, to take care of, right? So right now, a lot of these businesses are in a situation whereby they are going to run out of cash. And not only are they going to run out of cash, it's going to cost them more to borrow money because the cost of borrowing is going up, right? And the reason why the cost of borrowing is going up because the Bank of Canada is increasing. The Bank of Canada right now, the interest rate at this moment, right? I'm doing this video in June, right? It's at 1.50, right? And and there's a lot of economists that are predicting that, listen, by the end of the year, by 2022, the interest rate could go up as high as 3%, which means a lot of businesses will not be in a position to borrow more money, to take out more funding. Why? Because they already have debt that they're carrying and the cost of borrowing is even higher. So which means, listen, right? A lot of them, the only option is they might just think about, they might just think 
you know, they, to file for bankruptcy. And this is what's happening right now. This article came, this article came out on June 1st. Let me read it. The number of bankruptcy filed by Canadian small businesses is on the rise. According to the Canadian Association of Insolvency and Restructuring Professional, there were 807 business bankruptcy and proposal filed in the first quarter alone of 2022. This compared to 603 insolvency filed the same time last year, right? Now, here's what I was talking about, right? The average small firm is taking out $160,000 in debt, right? Now, look, look at this. Um, uh, so this, this is the highest increase recorded in more than 30 years, right? We're talking about the bankruptcy, right? 807 business just recently filed for bankruptcy in the first quarter of 2022. Listen, when a business filed for bankruptcy, then, right, all the, they're selling, they're liquidating all their assets. So, which means, right, they're getting, you know, they're closing everything. They're closing down their operation. They're liquidating, they're selling. So, that's what I said. Listen, right now, if you work for a small business owner, or if you, or if you work for a small business firm, or if you're a small business owner, or if you're thinking about getting into business, you need to re-strategize your entry point. You need to re-strategize how you're going to do it because you do not want to get into, uh, you don't want to start off with too much debt, right? That in itself is already going to start pulling you down, right? You want to make sure you're strategic. If you're going to take out any debt or if you're going to take out, that's why I always say revolving credit, right? Think about maybe getting a line of credit that you don't need, but you have access to it just in case you run into a shortfall, just in case you run into a situation where you need to tap into some, uh, to some funding, then you have your revolving credit because revolving credit, you only get charged based on the portion that you use. Because right now, a lot of businesses, as you saw here, they're carrying too much debt. Right, the average small firm is taking on is carrying up about hundred and sixty thousand dollars in debt, right? And because of the uh, interest rate going up, because of what's going on with inflation, and eh? and then the, one of the main reasons why a lot of small businesses go out of business or in the top the top reasons startups fail is because they ran out of cash. A lot of these businesses are running out of cash right now because the bankruptcy the bankruptcy rate is going up. Right, just in the first quarter of 2022, you already saw that article that says 807 businesses filed for bankruptcy. So listen, what does this mean for you? Listen, if you're a small business owner, you need to be prepared. Or if you're trying to start a business, if you wanna get into business, you gotta be prepared because listen, this is an article or this is a, a, a report that was done by um, uh, BDC, Business Development Bank of Canada. Right? They were asking, what are some of the skill set that, in, that uh, uh, do Canadian entrepreneurs have the skills that they need, right? So they were asking, okay, what are some of the skill set that are critical, that are essential, that entrepreneurs need to have? Now, they mentioned that well, from their article or from their report that they did. Let me read it. So, we found that Canadian entrepreneurs are very strong in managing their company's or operation, including all aspects of innovation and change management. However, they face challenges in human resources, sales, marketing, and strategic planning. So now, strategic planning, sales, marketing, and human resources. Now, remember I said one of the reasons a lot of small businesses fail, right, is because there's no market need for their product. Now, that's like 35%, right? A lot of small businesses fail. That's, that used to be the number one reason. But I think now it's the number two, right? The number one reason used to be there was no market need for their product, right? There is no market need for their product. And the number two reason used to be is because they ran out of cash. But it looks like right now, running out of cash is the top reason why a lot of these businesses are failing because of the debt that they're carrying, because of the uh, inflation, because of um, um, interest rate hikes. So that's what's happening. Now, if you're a small business owner, if you're thinking about getting into business, as this article, as this report says, right? One of the uh, skill set or one of the, you know, that a lot of small businesses in Canada or entrepreneurs don't have is sales and marketing, right? And here, right, here, as you can see here, one of the reasons why a lot of small businesses fail is because there's no market need for their product, which means, listen, if you're trying to get into business, make sure you understand marketing, make sure you understand sale. Before you launch your business, do your market research, understand your demographic, understand your core audience. What are they looking for? What need? Is there that you're trying to fulfill? That you, what is there a gap in the marketplace, right? Because you see, 
one of the main reasons is because this there is no market need for their product or services, right? And according to BBC or BDC, Business Development Bank of Canada, based on their survey that they did, they found out that a lot of small businesses, a lot of entrepreneurs, they're good at management, but they're not good when it comes to sales and marketing. They're not good when it comes to strategic planning. And, 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 and strategic planning and marketing is one of those skills that you need to acquire. You need to learn it so that you can do your market research before you launch your business, before you launch your product, right? To understand your core audience, to understand your market, to understand them so vividly. You want to understand them so well that, you're, that you don't have to sell to them, right? You're just educating them on your product, on the benefit, on the value that you're adding to them. So, do your market research before you start your business in this landscape because right now, as I said, there's too many variables, there's too many factors. Listen, the odds are against you if you're starting a business. Statistic is against you when you're starting a business. The, 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 the current environment is against you when you're starting a business. So you have to be, you have to be strategic, right? Understand marketing before you launch your product, before you, 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 you start your business. Understand your market, understand your product. How does your product serve your market? Is there a need for your product? Is there a market need for your product? If there isn't a market need, how do you, how do you position your product so that they, you know, it serves that audience people, right? Because listen, there's too many challenges, right? Like there's an article um, from, um, yeah, this was from, uh, what is it, RBC, RBC mentioned it, right? They said that the new challenges facing Canada's small businesses are, Debt is one of them, right? They're just carrying too much debt, as I said. Listen, this is third party information. I'm not giving you my opinion. I'm giving you information that I have extracted from third parties, right? From the, uh, uh, what do you call, StatsCan. This is, this, this right here is from RBC. Now, another thing they mentioned is, you know, the, uh, the leap to digital, right? You have to become a digital native. You have to understand how digital marketing works if you want to navigate in this new era of doing business, of, of doing business. Because listen, there are too many challenges. There are too many odds. There are too many, right? The, the, it's like the current environment is not in your favor. So you have to be educated. You gotta be informed. You gotta get the skills so you can position yourself properly. So that way you can increase your chances of, of, of you know, of, of your business or having that longevity right because you want to you want to start a business that has longevity you want to have you want to start a business that could be around for years and years even after you're done after you pass away right that business because listen the thing about businesses you don't want to it's, you don't want to be always starting over, right? Because when you're starting a business, you have to invest time, you have to invest energy, you have to invest capital, right? And you don't want to be in a situation where six months from now, you're shutting it down because you realize there was no market need, right? There was no, right? Nobody wants to buy your product because you, 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 you know, the need doesn't even exist, right? And also, you got to be, you know, you have to be Competitive. You have to understand how to be competitive because that's also one of the reasons why a lot of businesses go out of business or top reason why startup fail is because they're not competitive. The, the reason why they're not competitive is they don't understand their, 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 their market. They don't understand their competitors. You have to study your, study your competitor people. Know who your competitor is. Know how, study them, right? Study them. Study their pricing strategy, their marketing strategy, their business model. See how long they've been in business, what they're doing right that you can emulate, that you can apply. You got to study your competitor to the T so that way you can take some best practices. You can take some information that is currently working and then apply it in your business, people. That is the smartest thing that you can do. Is study your competitor. See what they're doing. See what kind of technology that they're doing, that they're using. If you see them using a technology, listen, if they're, if they're on Facebook, then you also got to be on Facebook. YouTube, you got to be on Instagram. You have to be able to see what your competitor is doing and what technology that are using that is free that you're not taking advantage of, right? So that's what's going on in this landscape, in this in this business landscape is that, right? There's just too many variables, there's too many things happening with small businesses. As I said, the last video I, I talked about zombie companies, right? A lot of these zombie companies, these companies that are just existing, they're just there. They're just, you know, they're just waiting to finalize the paperwork to close, right? And you see, this is an article that I that, that came out, right? Dan Kelly, president of Canadian Federation of, in, of independent businesses has said that he believed there were thousands of debt burden zombie companies that were effectively defunct but were technically staying in business on a faint hope that they could rebound when the pandemic restrictions were, were lifted. The hopes are clearly fading according to the superintendent data 
right? Instead, insolvencies are shooting up. The zombies are finally dying. The stake is going through the heart. Mr. Kelly said, adding that a survey of this member indicates that only 40% have been um, have seen their sales return to pandemic levels that the average small business has amassed, has amassed $160,000 in COVID related debt. Listen people, right? There's too many things going on. The real economy is about to collapse and this is going to impact you. It's going to impact small business owners. It's going to impact people that work for small business firm because as I said, as you saw here, this is the number right now, right? This is the number in terms of small businesses in Canada, right? 1.23 million small businesses in Canada and out of that 1.23, 1.2 million of them, 97, 98% are small businesses, right? And then if we go back here, the labor force, so 20 million, which means 65% of all jobs in Canada comes from small business firms between that have employee, that have uh, staff between 20 to nine, 20 to 100, 20 to 99 employees, people. The real economy is about to collapse. You're going to get impacted, small business owners. So that's why, listen, if you're thinking about getting into business, be strategic. Make sure you do your homework, do your due diligence, do get the skill set that you need. So that way you can increase your chances of, of, of succeeding in that business, in that market. Because in the market that we're in right now, with um, inflation, interest rates going up. You want to make sure you have capital, right? Access to capital ready. Lines of credit, credit lines, credit cards that you don't need, but you know it's there. So that way, if an, if an opportunity comes, if a marketing opportunity, a partnership opportunity, a, um, a joint venture opportunity comes out, you can tap into your line of credit, right? Put it towards that opportunity because you know that, hey, you know what? I'll be able to pay that line of credit off, right? Revolving credit, right? Because as I said, one of the main reasons that a lot of businesses fail is because they run out of cash. And right now, a lot of businesses are gonna run out of cash because of the interest rate situation. Interest rate is just too high, right? The cost of borrowing is going up, right? Canada, Bank of Canada is raising the interest rate. The banks, the credit unions, they're also raising the interest rate. So businesses, small business owners, they cannot afford to borrow money because they already have debt that they're carrying. If they take on more debt, it's gonna cost them more. So a lot of them, the only solution right now they're thinking about is, yo, is, is bankruptcy. It's just closing the doors, right, and shutting it down permanently, which now means it's going to impact you. It's going to impact the future generation that are looking for jobs, that are looking for work, because the small business owners or the small business firms that employ the majority of Canadians are going out of business at an, excel, you know, at, at an exp expedited rate. So listen, people, I'm going to keep it short. I'm going to, right? I think I, I went over my minute, but hopefully you got something out of this, right? Because this is, this is real information. This is what's going on that you're not going to see this. I'm trying to connect the dot for you so you see what's happening right now in real time that you need to pay attention to if you're a small business owner, if you work for a small business owner, that the real economy is about to collapse and you're going to get impacted. I'm going to get impacted. Everybody's going to get impacted. Small businesses, employers, those that work for small businesses, those that have businesses, those that are starting businesses, everybody's going to get impacted unless you get the right information so you can prepare yourself. So listen, I'm out of here. As always, watching this, hit that like button, hit the subscribe button so that you can be notified when I upload new videos. So listen, I'm out of here. I'll see you all in the next video. Peace.